and welcome to my channel. My name is Annette and today I finally had good enough reason to put my mascara on but today is not about my beauty routine while in isolation. Today my video is actually about food photography so let's go. So a few days ago I read this really really good article by my fellow writer and colleague Scott and I'm not going to pronounce his surname because I'm definitely going to butcher it but I'm going to put the link in the description below. So his article was about, well it was called Why do other photographers take my images? I think. And it was about how he found his way into commercial food photography and he became unapologetically himself and developed his style and his way of working regardless of what everybody else thinks. And the main point was the fact that what matters is not what other photographers think you know on instagram on facebook in facebook groups and things like that what matters is what his clients think because end of the day they're the ones who pay the bills it is not the other photographers who are you know judging or critiquing your work now i've done a bit of food photography myself and mine has definitely not been to the level of scott's work his work is sort of like high fashion meets food kind of thing and he's got like this really amazing setup in his house I believe and yeah mine's definitely not like that so the food photography I've done has been generally like lifestyle -y kind of photography so for example I've shot food in cafes and <clears throat> the actual environment i.e the cafe background and the tables and the decor was sort of important part of the images so I've done all the shooting on the premises I've never really taken anything home or to a studio and like hire a stylist or anything like that so mine's been more like quite a simple i would say quite instagrammable but a bit boring and yeah not really sort of highly technical or fashionable and stylish kind of food photography so just quite basic basically so now because i'm stuck home and i'm finding my ways around shooting myself and just doing projects around home and sort of my local area without, um, you know, interacting with other people. I got thinking about what if I sort of took Scott's advice to a certain extent and implemented that into my food photography, which is non-existent, but it's only non-existent because nobody's paying me to do it, but I can still do it at home as a personal project. So the idea was, as somebody who is definitely not an experienced food photographer, to take Scott's advice in terms of losing that, you know, that need for approval and that need for fitting in and just putting all that away and just using my style and my, my way of shooting and putting that into food photography and to see what I can create. So my inspiration in food, food photography is Bob Carlos Clark. Now he's more known for his sort of fashion erotica work and um, things like that but his food photography is really really nice. It's very sort of gritty and raw and dark grainy and it's definitely not something you would see you know food photographers do now on Instagram things like that. You don't really see that kind of style much anymore at all and for me that's sort of taking my way of working which is so what I do I do like street photography I shoot loads of self-portraits minimalism fine art that kind of stuff and then take all that and place it into food photography so that was kind of the idea I had for this video another person I really like um, is Guy Bodin again I'm not really well at pronouncing names but I'll link them below and if he was alive today and if he was shooting food I think I would really relate to his way of creating things and his style is very very unique definitely very sort of colorful very different from Bob Carlos Clark but to me it's that you know that difference the uniqueness that makes you stand out and makes your work look special compared to everybody else's which is I'm not saying that everybody else has bad work but everybody else has sort of really quite nice work so the you know it's quite hard to stand out and you need to be really really unique and you need to have something very special about you to stand out in this sea of really nice instagrammable shots and these really pleasant photographs 
So Kai Portin, he shot fashion and shoes. So if I could take his style and his um, talent and put that into food photography, I think he would create some really, really nice stuff. So when it comes to subjects and what to shoot, so now obviously in isolation, we try not to go to shop as much as we can. And we do like a weekly shop over the weekend and we sort of plan out every day, like meals for every single day so that we don't end up buying too much stuff or not enough. But it also means that I can't just pop to the shop and, you know, just get something like, I don't know, what do people shoot for food? Um, grapes and, I don't know, apples and other fruit, I guess. Um, yeah, I can't just like go to the shop and pick a few nice things that will look good in photographs. I actually have to use what we got in one of our weekly shops. So the bad thing is for this week, most of our meals are generally, um, so we have obviously meat, various forms of meat. Um, that's not very photogenic. We also have loads of frozen vegetables. Again, I'm not gonna shoot that. Plus it's gonna go to waste, so let's not do that. And as for fresh stuff, Again, like even the fruit, all I have is apples, but luckily, luckily we bought some really nice looking apples, so I'll, I can use that. And the rest we have like berries, but again, that's all frozen. So I'm really gonna struggle as to what to actually shoot, but I think that's the kind of the challenge and just the fun bit as well. So what I'm gonna use today is my living room, which is where I'm now. We have white walls, so they'll be pretty decent background and we don't really have any high tables here, so I'll be using our coffee table, which is quite low. Um, so I just have to put my tripod quite low. And I'll use that against the wall. And yeah, I'll kind of see where it goes and hopefully I can create something decent or something worth editing at all. I mean, I, I don't know, but we'll, we shall see. I think now in isolation, that's kind of what we need to do. We need to find ourselves, our style, where are we going, what are we doing? And I'm not saying you need to use this time to be productive because I think it can be really counterproductive to keep suggesting for people, you know, <clears throat> keep suggesting like tips how to stay uh, on top of creating things and generating things and generating income and doing all these really stressful things alongside of other stressful things, you know, people's health, there's job worries, there's um, parents looking after kids at home and schooling them, so there's a lot going on. And just use this time to allow yourself to be creative, but in a very natural, relaxing way, not like forcing yourself to do it. So as for inspiration, I honestly have no idea I'm gonna shoot yet. I don't know how many apples I'm gonna shoot, I don't know how I'm gonna put them down. and. The issue for me is I'm not very patient. I'm not really, like, I wish, I really wish I was, like, really good at styling things and, you know, like, just moving things around till they're perfect. But the way I shoot, um, which is why I think I'm, I can't really confine myself to a studio, is very much of the moment I shoot emotions, I shoot movement, I shoot things happening, whether it's weddings on the streets, whether it's person posing in front of me, um, so this is a thing I will really, really struggle with. And I will try again, not to put any pressures on myself and just kind of put some music on and just have, have some fun shooting and see what it ends up with. And I mean, in the worst case, if there's literally nothing I can edit and show you, then, you know, I'll just do the end of the video tomorrow when I look at the images and, you know, tell you how unsuccessful it was, but hopefully, I will end up with at least one image I can edit um, and show you. So yeah, I shall see you tomorrow. I mean, you'll see this in a minute, but I'll be editing and shooting the end of the video tomorrow after I've looked at the images and I've had a chance to edit them. Right, I'm back on day two and obviously the video is continuing, but for me it's the next day and I finished shooting, did the edits and I actually printed them out as well. And so before I run through them, just want to quickly have a chat about the actual process and how all that went. So first of all, I didn't actually think I'm gonna really enjoy it. Like I said, I'm not really patient and sort of really stylized kind of shoots. It's not really my thing, but okay. And especially the first one. So the first one I did was 
like I didn't even edit that one because it was it was just really bad it was just I just put an apple in this see-through whiskey glass and I thought oh that would look quite cool obviously it didn't and I thought you know what am I gonna do now like how am I gonna go from this to something I actually enjoy and I started looking around and just I don't know what it is but you sort of start making these connections like you see for example I saw you know apple apples my apple was red and I saw I have this um photography book about China's revolution and it's got like red covers and everything so I thought oh you know that could look quite nice so I put that and then from that I went to adding things like um we have gold cutlery not gold cutlery but like gold colored cutlery and I added a fork and then just a little bit and it's just I feel like you need that first those first few shots of generally they're not gonna be very good at least not for me but it kind of eases you into it like it's like a warm-up almost for the you know actual shooting process so yeah for me the warm-up was shooting an apple in a whiskey glass and it didn't look very good so I literally just binned up the whole idea and started fresh as for my equipment I used a 85mm lens and I really kind of wanted that compressed look which is why I didn't go for my usual 35mm lens uh, which adds a bit more dimension I think um, so the actual the look I went for was more compressed and quite close-ups as well and my coffee table is really really low so at times I struggle a little bit when I wanted to get my tripod like really in line uh, with a table I had to like I had to move my tripod back quite a bit just to sort of get that level right so as for aperture I use f16 for most if not all shots I think because I wanted that compressed look everything's sort of nice sharp and focused and to me it gives a bit of retro feel because now for example if you go on Instagram most of the shots tend to be um, using quite a wide aperture when you look at food stuff um, you know with things nicely um, blurred in the background and stuff like that and for me I want to give a bit more harsh retro look without making it look like I'm trying to recreate something um, I still want to do it in my own way but just use those two things i.e. f16 and a nice compressed look but at 85mm lens right so in not any particular order let's take a look at the shots so the first one is a tin of tomatoes tin of chunky chopped tomatoes from Aldi actually and so I picked them up and the label came off and there was another label underneath so I thought that looks kind of cool and I thought maybe I can use that um, just to sort of style it I guess put in a way that looks quite nice and I used that china book underneath as a nice red background so with these shots I wasn't really afraid of getting that texture out on the table and everything I wasn't like too worried about making things nice and soft and blurry I actually like that harsh harsh look so in the second image I used the same tin of chopped tomatoes and I just opened a book and I thought not just how the text in there but also have a portrait in the bottom corner that could look quite nice and just sort of the leading lines of the table again I think it looks nice going from the corner uh, from the right top corner to the bottom left corner and again I think that um, label peeling off on the tin it kind of just adds the image a little bit just makes it a little bit different now the third image I think it might be my favorite and so for this one I did introduce also a can of coke and a fork and I, again I think the way I compose it I when I put the apple down on the book I really like how it looks how it's almost floating because everything is in focus and you wouldn't achieve the same effect if you shot with a you know f2 or something and just getting everything nice and sharp and gritty and focus and obviously it brought the texture out as well in editing and the really really powerful portrait as well I think that just makes the whole image for me at least now I know this is not something that many would enjoy or think is appropriate but that kind of is how I would express myself if I had to shoot food um, so that kind of combines my love for photography, art, editing and I'm also because I study criminology and history so adding the books as well it just kind of I don't know it's like little pieces of me in one image 
for this image I did go black and white because it was for me it was just a tiny bit too distracting the kind of coke was really standing out and the apple was you know it's obviously bright red and kind of the image was a bit lost in color for me so I chose black and white so the fourth image so I came across this page completely randomly while I was flicking through the book and it says revolution is not a dinner party I thought that is such a good title so I started off um, for this shot I did the page open with a fork then I added the apple and then I added a piece of paper which was from a delivery that just come whilst I was shooting on the previous sets and I just opened the box and they had this white packaging inside and I thought hmm, I can make a, I can make a use of it so the next shot I used you know my, my own hand I used a tumbler is that what you call it a whiskey glass I don't know I used a glass and I put some jewelry in it and again I wanted that sort of harsh chunky gold so I used this gold chain and some gold rings as well and again it kind of gives me that 1980s vibes a little bit you can see some of the window light on my hands and then on the apple as well that's all coming from the window behind me I didn't use any artificial light or anything I had a reflector but I didn't actually use that much so the final picture is me using a sweet potato I didn't know what to do with it but the shape of it lends to it being put down because it's like flat at the bottom and then it has like a curve on top of it so I thought I'll do like a little still life setup and so this is a time when I had to move my tripod back quite a bit because it didn't go low enough so to get that sort of straight perspective I had to move it back quite a bit and then in editing I cropped in quite a bit oh yeah I just used the uh, book as a background as well a piece of paper and honestly it took me like two minutes to put this together um, and I feel like sometimes you can spend like ages and ages just putting things together for a still life shot and it still doesn't look right something looks too contrived so for these because I'm not like I said I'm not really patient I try to sort of do it quite quick but at the same time you know so it does fit my style and my vision so if I shoot next time I think I'll just use a different part of the house and try something different and we have a really really nice blue wall upstairs so I might just use that only thing is now when I go shopping next time which will be probably Saturday I'll probably just think about just a tiny bit more and put some nice fresh produce I could use for shooting because like honestly this time I was really clutching with straws and that is literally all I had to use an apple a sweet potato and a tin of tomatoes so I think I can do maybe you know maybe some more fresh stuff next time and see see where we end up but again, I, I don't know, I feel like after I've done this, I feel like I've put so much energy into it that it will take me a while to sort of regenerate it and do it again for another shoot. Because um, it kind of took quite a bit of thinking and doing and just putting everything together. And I feel like I just need to maybe shoot something else for a few days and then maybe come back to this some other time. And I know this kind of work will never make into cookbooks and things, um, this is not the type of work that Jamie Oliver would um, commission to do but I know there are people who are really good at it and I enjoy looking at those images they produce and I enjoy knowing people who work in food photography industry and I think their work is amazing they're so talented and obviously I'll never do that kind of work for my clients because that's not what I do at all but um, I can still use food for the food photography as a fun way of shooting just do some little personal projects so who knows maybe this could be your next challenge whilst you're isolating you know see where you go left in your weekly shop until the end of the week and maybe use some of the items and see if you can create something nice um so yeah so thank you for watching and hopefully i'll be back with another video about food photography if not i'm sure i'll be back with something else thank you